Hey, IDS 302, welcome to the jungle. Now, welcome to module six, the final module of the course. I'm trying to keep this efficient and make it the last video uh, from the course that will end on December 3rd, Friday. That's 10 days. Today being Tuesday, November 23rd at about 1.56 or 8 p.m. Okay. Um, I'm kind of out of it. I apologize. I had a friend, one of my best friends died from COVID last week. I got the news on Thursday, I think. Um, not, uh, not thrilled about it at all. My, one of my best friends, Jerry, I've, he's one of my newer friends. And when I say newer friends, that means we've been friends since 1979 or 80, actually, probably 70, 79, we all started playing a card game. We worked together, a bunch of us started playing a card game every Tuesday night. Uh, it was the Baltimore Orioles versus the uh, Pittsburgh Pirates World Series. And we started playing every Tuesday night, rotating with a bunch of young guys that could play till three or four in the morning, go to work the next day in a, uh, at a grocery store, trucking, uh, delivery business. Anyways, I know you didn't come here to hear that, but, uh, I've, uh, uh, he's one of my best friends. I just saw him in July, just played cards with him again, same guys. And, um, he texted me in August asking if I was coming back this fall for another card game. He lives up in Wisconsin and I said, yeah. Um, and, uh, he just retired at 64. He bicycled like 20 miles a day, every freaking day, even in the winter up there. Um, he always ate healthy. Uh, he was, he, he liked to drink his beers at cards, but that's about it. And, um, you know, to answer the question, no, he wasn't. And that was his choice. And I'm so mad that he made that choice. I talked to him about it in July and we have another friend who's not either. And, but anyways, okay. So yeah, I'm just, like I said, I apologize. Two minutes, gotta, I'll make it up to you later. Um, okay. So I set everything up as far as grading by points. You should be looking at points now as far as your total, not percentage. Uh, remember, this course is based on points. The grade, you've got um, 900 plus is an A, 800 to 899 is a B, uh, 700 to 799 is a C, and we do have those pluses in there, right? Yes, we decided this time we're going to give you pluses. I ain't never doing that again. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, uh, yeah, so we got a lot of students doing real well in this class. Um, talking about uh, this being a longer module, um, go until Friday for 10 days. I did just look at your discussion boards about, uh, like, the interdisciplinary readings from the pro and the con side, devil's advocate kind of thing. And, and what strikes me is, even though I think somebody did mention it, but innocuously, uh, I'd like to think that you think now it being an interdisciplinarian is, is more than being a jack of all trades. Okay. Cause isn't a jack of all trades, just multidisciplinary, right? Uh, how do you like this hanging here? It's pretty pointless. It's over my head, but it's in front of me here. Um, see my friend Coke zero is my friend. There's my friend. Anyways. Um, uh, so, Thinking about it as interdisciplinary, not, you know, it was easy to say back in 301 and things, jack of all trades. You know, I am, I'm a naturally jack of all trades. I actually, I naturally multitask. We know we say that and we're good at it. Probably we all have to do it to function, but to be more than a jack of all trades in it as an interdisciplinary, it means what it means to know these processes of what integration, right? So there's your difference right there as I've, emphasized and hammered for those that had my 301 as well as now in 302. Um, Easter egg number one is pretty long. So you want to jot this down. And this is like, you know, I'm asking you to do like an oath right now. Okay. Maybe it's a forks up oath. But Easter egg number one is I know that nothing will be accepted after 11.59 p.m. Arizona time, you can do AZ time, Friday, December 3rd. Oh, there's the yawn. 
Um, I've been sleeping really good lately, though, I guess. Um, so Easter egg number one is I know that nothing will be ca- accepted after 11.59 p.m. AZ time, Friday, December 3rd. And I want you to think about that and remember that. Do not flirt with danger. I, 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 I can't tell you how many times I wake up on the morning after. It's like Christmas for me, every end of every session. I wake up and see what's under the tree in terms of people emailing me saying, oh, you know, Professor, I just thought my, my lights went out. I couldn't do anything. I, oh, I totally messed up. I thought it ended on Saturday. I mean, no, it just, you know, I'm making you say that. Oh, so I can come back and tell you. All right, module six. There's 160 points left in module six. Uh, but I'm going to be very vigorous in scoring rigorous work, okay? Um, there is a, what do we got in module six? Do I put it down here somewhere? Thought I did. I gotta have that Jeopardy song handy. Okay. You have this video worth, oh, wrong class. Glad I didn't say what it was worth. You might get mad at me. Um, this video is worth 10 points. You got a pick one discussion board worth 50 and you got a final paper ver- worth a hundred. Okay. Um, in terms of, let me see, I have to go off my, I'm going to have to go off the, my script here. Um, for the discussion board, pick one, uh, it used to be something where I'd have, Everybody write about almost all of them in various um, modules. However, it seemed to me that it's a good idea, a good way, and students have liked it, to get a little taste on all these links. However, to be able to just pick one to write about. So you can pick uh, the interview with Michael Presdia talks with a former student. That's Dr. Presdia, my colleague who I run around with on a weekly basis. Uh, and... Um, He's involved in National Honor Society of Interdisciplinary Studies. He's got a pretty interesting uh, interview there for the former student. Then you've got the website for the Association for Interdisciplinary Studies, of which I'm a member. Um, Actually, it's integrative now, I think, integrative studies. But uh, if you want to do an analysis on that, that's fine. Then there's the National Network for Science of Team Science. Barker, Gilbreth, and Stone, the interdisciplinary needs of organizations, an oldie but a goodie. Same with Zimdar's, the world of cross-functional teams, and Newell's, the state of field of interdisciplinary theory, which is a really deep read. Um, So that's what you got there in terms of your uh, pick one to write about, and you'll write uh, 500 words worth up to 50 points. That leads me to... Easter egg number two, Um, I will complete, again, on my honor, I will complete the course evaluation. Again, it's anonymous. You can rip me. It's time for vengeance. (laughs) Please no. Um, I get judged on it, yes, in in one factor of my review. Um, I think that... Uh, It gives you an opportunity to either just check it off, like you have quantitative surveys out there right now, um, or you could, there's also, it's a mixed method, so you can also fill in a blank on some questions. You're not required to answer all of them. But please get to that. You should be getting an email almost every day from ASU about this. If not, you should just see the link I have posted. Find it on your MyASU page, okay? Um, I wanted to talk then about the... um, the final paper. Well, now that you're, you know, again, you can still get a hold of me on a one-on-one basis. That's fine if I don't do another video, okay? Um, your surveys, a lot of you got them out. Some of you have not yet. Um, it's just concerning seeing that. I hate to see you give up at this point. Um, and just to give an, give an idea about that, let's see. One, two, three, four five, six are not out, but you know what? One, two, three, four of those, I probably won't expect. They're not participating. So a couple of you have to get them out there. And then there is one that needs to correct his. Uh, Otherwise, if he gets data like that, it's not going to be good. 
And so anyways, you got your surveys out, 20 points. You send them out. You send them to people. You post them on social media. put them places. What you do not do is limit it to Arizona State University students. What you do not do is limit it to people your age because you don't want any older folks doing it. Um, you don't limit the high end of age, okay? I don't care if you got a 110-year-old grandmother on Thanksgiving. If she wants to talk about Black Lives Matter, you best damn well let her. If she wants to talk about driving, self-driving cars, she gets to do the survey. Anybody 18 and over. If you do get somebody who admits they're younger than 18, chuck the results of that survey. Get rid of it. Do not put them in your data. I will give you a zero and we will have a, have a talk because you're violating the ethics of research by having a minor participate. It's a real cut and dried thing, okay? So please don't do that. Um, in terms of the paper itself, again, like I said, it's due December 3rd. It's a Friday. Do not wait till it's too late, okay? Please do not wait, all right? Because I can't accept it after the class is over. Um, there's a there's a page that has a final paper checklist. Now you're going to do the cover page. Now you're going to do the table of contents. What I would recommend, table of contents, I'll call it a TOC, is rather difficult to format, okay? So, and this is one case where I think that on the sample, you can copy, paste it, and then adjust it for yours, whether it's subheadings, of course, disciplines, of course, page numbers, of course, just because it's a tough thing to format. And I will ding uh, about five points if your table of contents looks like it's all snaky or incomplete or something. Okay. Cover page should be simple. I don't want any pictures. I don't want any colors. I don't want anything. Cover page. You see it on the sample. Boom. It's simple. Okay. Keep it simple. Um, then you're going to have your step one. You're going to have step two. You're going to have your th through four steps. And the fifth step, after the fifth step, is where you're going to have one work cited list. One work cited list. Okay. Make sure all those works that you're citing have actually been cited in text. Okay. Um, make sure it's formatted correctly. After, after the work cited list, you have an optional appendix you can put in. Now, appendices can you typically go afterwards. That would be like if you want to include all the questions from your survey with all the potential answers, but do not just copy and paste them because it'll come out crappy. You kind of have to type them in there. It's an interesting and good looking way to do things. Um, very, I, could, I say professional, but it's more scholarly. Okay, and it looks really good. It's not required though, and I won't ding for not having it, but I could give you some extra for having it, all right? Um, so you want to have those sections you get the, your same step one, two, three, four, five with any adjustments, corrections you wanted to make on those, no work cited on those. Okay. Of course, step three isn't bibliography anyways. I mean, it's a, you know, annotated anyways. So you have your step four, which you just did. Now step five, you're going to, I mean, is all these steps plus step five, then is going to be to, you know, to do that integrated, um, resolution, what, what have you on that, right? Step five. And there is a sample for step five there. And you're gonna do the sections, um, the uh, uh, the survey results, uh, what's actually gonna create, discuss, integrated framework for holistic understanding. So you're gonna have your subheadings are survey results, analysis of data with charts and graphs. That should be pretty cool. I know you can use color there, please. You can three-dimensional them using Excel, uh, you know, whatever you wanna do, it's good stuff. The visualization of your data is very, very uh, important and good to see, and it helps to contextualize what you're finding here. You're going to do an analysis of your data, which means you're going to interpret the results. You get to interpret the results here, right? This is what research is. We build on previous research. Consider what you've learned from other research that you've looked at, especially for your step three. All right. Um, and then a summary of. I'm sorry, integrated understanding. Put it all together in your integrated understanding of your problem. How are you going to solve it? I mean, what what did you learn? What what do we need to do? You're the researcher here. Tell us what you what you what you found and what you interpreted and what you recommend for this problem issue artifact, what have you. Okay, it puts it all together for you in that one big paper. I talked about in week one, and it's exciting, and I, I hope you're proud of the work that you accomplished. 
because it's not easy, but you did it. And you could see in there that there are patterns to, you know, a format to it. Besides the formatting of the citation, there's like a format, just like journalism is a format, just like, you know, a lot of different types of writing have their own specific ways of doing it. So does academic scholarly writing. Um, I want you to be a word about academic rigor. Um, defined as creating an environment of yawning, of boredom, in which each student is expected to learn at high levels. I like this definition. In, this, in academic sense of academic rigor, it's referring to that fine line between challenging and frustrating a student. Okay, the fine line between challenging and overwhelming a student. Okay. So if it looks to me like, eh, you know, you just whipped it out. I got, I eh, gave him what he wanted. Eh, you're not getting, you're not getting a hundred on it. Okay, you may get a seventy if it's passable, but that's about it. Okay, so in terms of rigor, it means that students are challenged to think, perform, and grow at a level that they were not at previously. It means that students must work like an athlete of a team in a team practice to build their skills, understanding, and thinking power so that they can achieve a higher and higher levels. It means that the standards of the course are calibrated so that students are compelled to grow, but are not frustrated and overwhelmed in the process. I think that's what you hopefully found here, okay? Um, I want to uh, get into the... Um, uh, the course evaluation, make sure you do it again. Uh, and, um, you know, so the last class for, okay, blah, 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 blah. submit it early. Okay, congratulations then, because you are an interdisciplinarian. Okay. Uh, Easter egg number three is I am an interdisciplinarian. That's Easter egg number three. I am an interdisciplinarian. Um, remember that it's an academic field. But it's also a process, right? A very um, specific way to analyze uh, issues, artifacts, 21st century problems. And the process is what? Integration, right? Now, I gave you strike number three already. So I'm sure people are dropping off like it's a Zoom meeting where I said goodbye. I always like to check this. So what I'm going to do is I want to ask, I want to tell you about graduation. When you do graduate, Hopefully things are getting back to normal. Uh, my son graduates in December and we're going to it. There's going to be something called commencement. And that's where usually the whole university gets together in the stadium. And the big shots are up there, Dr. Crow and a lot of big wigs. And they're congratulating everybody. And usually people throw their caps, but you'll never get it back. Um, and then there's your convocations, which are your individual colleges or schools have their own ceremonies. I had one with the College of Letters and Sciences. I had one with the School of Social Transformation because I was interdisciplinary and I was earning certificates in both. Um, my son's got the commencement, but he's got College of Letters and Sciences and he's got Barrett Honors College, all these different things. The reason I'm getting to that is if you come, come here or if you're here, if you come here, go to those things. It's really gonna be cool. I'm not a mask fan. I can tell you that right now. I hate, hate the fact that I got to wear one. You know that by, by now. I do have my three vaccines, and I'm very confident. And I do believe there's a pandemic of the unvaccinated at this point. But without saying any more, I don't know what the, you know, you probably all, you all look good in your masks, I guess. Me, mask, beard, just don't go together. So, but I love going to convocation. If it's next spring, next winter, whatever, try to go. Because convocation, especially for CISA, I, we get to go up on stage in terms of me and my colleagues, and we get to sit up there. It's a much more intimate gathering, even though there's thousands of your, you know, thousands of your close friends and family, and you're, you guys are sitting in the on the gym floor there, and 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 we get to um, have more specific uh, recognition for your achievements and for your for the superstars. But also, each student then comes up, each graduate comes up, crosses the stage, and gets their uh, you know fake diploma uh, booklet and you'll get it in the mail later um, and it's, and get your picture taken. It's really cool. And it's nice where you get the screams for everybody and, and it's more personal. And uh, my son's, I think is at Gamage theater this, this December. So I want you to, you know, just consider those things. It's a great sense of accomplishment. I, I did it at 
I mean, on my website, I have my one minute, one minute of fame where I walked across the stage at commencement to get my graduate of the year award. And, and uh, it's still my one minute of fame. People get 15 minutes. I get one. Anyways, okay, for an extra five points, I'm giving you Easter egg number four, if you want it. IDS equals, you fill in the blank. And that's an extra five points for Easter egg number four. Um, keep in touch. Get a hold of me if you got any problems. Forks up. Peace.